Hey! <laughs> How you guys doing? Yes. I'm Kelby Canick. And I'm Miss Primrose. And welcome to Artists Are Shitty People. <laughs> All right, so we got to be cognizant of the mics now okay. at this point. Yeah. Just, mic check, mic check. Check, 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 check. All right. Sounds I'm so much louder than you. I can't keep saying sounds good because I can't hear a thing. <laughs> Say but it looks good. It looks good. All right, there you go. Yeah. Talk like you talk. Like, talk, yeah. Talk, right. talk that talk. Project. Okay. From the diaphragm. From the, from the diaphragm. Prim. And I should know this because I be saying it. Right. Well, I should be saying it. I be rapping. Nobody <laughs> don't want me to rap, though. But it's okay. It's another topic for another no, day. Another topic for today. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. Yeah. So from last time, do you want to pick up where we left off? Yeah, we pick up where we left off. Where, you know, just a little recap for the people out there. Um, no, ain't no recaps. They need to go back and watch. The, oh, you're right. Yeah. Go back and watch. Go Start back. Start at the beginning. Start at one and yeah. work your way down. So from the last episode. Binge watching Stranger you, Things, but won't be an artist. And, man. Uh, I need to know right now what, what, how I get on. 30 nah. seconds. You, that's all you got. Nah. <laughs> go back. Watch it. Soak it all in. Take some notes. Mm. And they ask questions. But anyway, so we talked about the budget. Right. I found out I was broke. Yes. And then we had some more questions to try to help me get on this artistry path the correct way and not right. the faking it to you making it way because that really don't work, y'all. So the question I was asked was, in the next 12 months, what do I want 4500 to do for me in my music career because that's what we found out was my excess amount of money. That, well, not excess, but the amount of money that I had left. That's your budget. That I was willing to spend what? on my music All career. that condenses into one word. My budget. Well, your budget. <laughs> <laughs> that's See, my budget. That's why we have words right. to convey these complex ideas to each other <laughs> so that we get, oh, I got an idea in my head. And not go put all it around the world <laughs> <laughs> to come back and say one word. Your budget. Yeah. So that's my now budget. Now you know what a budget is. Now look right. at you using your I'm budget. I'm using it, y'all. I'm <laughs> using Pat myself on the back. Because so that's growth. Yeah. Okay? That's growth. Now here's the thing. Since you since you found your budget, mm -hmm. how has your life changed? Well, I've been saying no a lot more often, <laughs> um, doing things that don't require me to spend money to go anywhere, really and truthfully. Um, and I'm trying to eat in more, but people keep wanting to pay for my meals, and I'm okay with that. You know, I'm not gonna be like no to a meal, but uh, but I am holding the corner a lot tighter. Right. And I'm not trying to go on too many trips and because I'm a trip queen. I love going out of town real quick to do this and that and the third, but I've been like, ah, unless it was pre-planned and I already paid for it, now I'm like, mm, can't really do that, you know? And mm. it's okay. Like, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. Right. I may down the line, but right now, since I'm still cognizant of the fact that my budget isn't what I thought it was, and I was mm. just making it just on God's grace that I was making it on, now I'm like, okay, I can't do that. No, I'm sorry, I can't do that. And it's just, it's cool. I'm staying in the house more and doing more stuff on the computer. Okay. So. And, so, and this is the, the thing of knowing. Knowing is doing. Yeah. And that kind of like loops back to what we talked about earlier. Um, in the previous episode is a lot of times you're informed. You have information, mm -hmm. but you don't have knowledge. Yeah. So you have all this data in your head from books and podcasts and interviews and all kind of stuff. So it's all these words and things that you've heard, mm. but... How do you use it? Yeah. So you have no way of actually applying it. It's like... All right, so I'm a nerd. Right. And computer science, um, everything that is on your phone, which mm -hmm. is a computer, everything that is on your computer is just data, ones and zeros on a hard drive. Mm. All of it is data. Some of it is information. Some of it is applications. Mm -hmm. All of it is data, ones and zeros, though. The data that makes a JPEG... You can look at it as a JPEG, as a picture. Yeah. Uh, MP3, data. Like uh, Excel Word Sheet, data. So you're saying all of those are ones and zeros? All of it is just a series of ones and zeros. So if I look really closely, I'm going to see ones and zeros? You will see, if you open it up in a proper program, you can actually see it's binary code. It'll read it as binary code. It's just a string of ones and zeros. That's the only thing a computer understands. <laughs> but here's the thing. All of these are files, right? Mm -hmm. But some of the files actually do things. You have apps. 
Oh, okay. An app is still yep. a file. But you open an app up and you can calculate something. You can record a song. You can record a video. You, you can go on edit Instagram it, you can send and share messages. the social media. So while it's still data, yeah. it's data that has a function. You mm. can use it. You know it has purpose. And you could take that data, that 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 application, and you could take these other the pictures that you've taken and do, do more with it. Mm. So now you you have all these pictures that are on your phone. Yeah. But they're just sitting on your phone. But if you download this other file that's an application like Instagram, now you can share those pictures with the world and they can like it and you can meet people because of these pictures. You can take this data that's just information and because you have this data that is applicable and or functional, mm -hmm. you can now do, do more with, with the, it. Yeah. And so that's the whole thing. It's like a lot of times you get all these bits and pieces of information online and all these things that happen. And it's like, it's great. You have all this data. You have, sitting there. Yeah, but you don't have you don't have the, the programs to run it. Yeah. Mm. And so it's like, how do you apply mm -hmm. the data that you have? So it's like, so when you have, you have your credit cards and your bills and you have all this data around you. Mm -hmm. And then we sit down and we run your spreadsheet. We apply Hey, yes, this is what yeah. a budget is, and this new piece of information, this paradigm shift that this is what a budget is, and this is how we come up with a budget, and this is why we're coming up with a budget and how it's going to affect Allocate your life. that budget. Yeah. And now you leave, and that, that process is still running in your system tray. It's still running in the background on your apps, hmm. and you know, like, no, I can't do that. Yeah. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm about to make a sandwich before I leave. Like, it changes the way that you move through the world, it changes the decisions that you're making because now you have purpose and you have the information that you can apply that's functional and you can use it. Yeah. Telling, like, it's like a lot of times, like, uh, I think, I don't know if, I, we talked about last week, like Wendy Day when she was like 150,000. Yeah. Like, that's a great piece of information. Boom. Now all these artists have it. And it's like, where do you put it? Yeah, what do you what do, do you with use it, it that for now? <laughs> it's like, yeah. So, mm -hmm. like, now we have to turn it into something that's applicable. Mm -hmm. And so, like, that's that's the thing where, okay, well, last week we have this information. You have a forty five hundred dollar budget, right? So now, what am I applying it to? What is what does it need to do for me in the next twelve months? So my answer for that was two thousand of it would be go nope. to already. But go ahead, I'm gonna let you finish. You just know that everything you're saying is It's wrong. already wrong. It's already wrong. It's already wrong. <laughs> I failed the homework assignment, like, y'all. Right. <laughs> the only one saying, see? <laughs> Shot me down. <laughs> already, like, damn. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> what we having there? Dream pressures. You? Using your technology. Did. You didn't print it out and write it. <laughs> I did better than last week, because last week I right. printed it out. But man. No, no, but you said. <sighs> 2000 <laughs> would go towards <laughs> creating content, video, music, snippets, things like that. And then 2,500 of it towards marketing that content, like playlisting, competitions, performances, things like that, you know, to, to make money by increasing visibility. I thought that that would be a good application for my. You money. wrote that down right there? Yeah. Ah! I was going to insert like a sound effect like I threw it. <laughs> You wrote that down right there. See, at least it went on paper this time, and it's still wrong. I still oh, got to ask. No, no. So the, here's the here's the here's the question. And so, and it could be because like the question, it, you know, misconstrue on the question. Uh, what is the minimum results that you need to see? What do you need to see happen? What thing would you need to accomplish? What what would you need to be able to say? What statement would need to be true for you? Uh huh. This time next year, I'm after you spent $4,500 in 12 months of your life. So I would want to say I made X amount of playlists so that my music is being heard. Put the X on. Like they, oh, yeah. what is X? Yeah. Like, see? 20. 20 playlists? 20 playlists. Okay. If I can make 20 playlists this year, I'd be cool. Happy with that. Having Minimally. $4,500. $4, yeah. Making it to 20, 20 playlists. playlists. 20 playlists. 
Okay. That's just playlists, though, because there still has to be more that comes from that. Can't no, all go to playlists. No, no, no. But see, but that's see, look, look at you. Look at you moving the goalposts, and that ain't even <laughs> the end of the play. Like, listen. <laughs> I got to do more than playlists. No, no but see, that, but it's, that's why I said, what are the minimum thing? Like, like after you spend the $4,500, so mm-hmm. don't end there. Like, so say, I'll say 20, um, playlists, 20 playlists. And at least four major performances on some. You know, reputable stage, not just your regular little bar. Um, what? Look, I had a performance the other night. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you about this. I'm tell y'all too. At this unnamed place, mm-hmm. it's a bar. I'm not gonna say which one it is, but I went there and went everybody follow you on Instagram. They just so they go know. And look they know what see. it was. It's fine. I mean, look. <laughs> anyway, messy. It, go ahead. <laughs> So the bar wouldn't let us in because one of my dancers, she was under 21, and it was a 21 and up bar. Right. However, they like their liquor license. They do, and they don't want to get it snatched. (laughs) Right. She's 20, not 21. Right. Got it. And um, but she's performed there before with me. Like we've done shows there before. It's just I don't know if it's new management or whatever it is, and it's cool because she don't drink. So it was like she ain't drinking. We just wanted to get in and out for the performance that we were booked for. Right. But they wouldn't let us in and. Um, we tried to reason with them. The security ended up like putting his hands on her to like try to pull her out the out the club, out the bar. And that's when I had an issue because I'm like, you're not gonna put your hands on none of, nobody that's with me. Like, you just don't do that. I don't think that's uh, right. So I ended up taking to what it, the blood clot. You don't right. know this primrose. Like, you know, <laughs> it got a little. It got a little heated for two point two seconds. Um, but I was like, you know, my reputation. You got key right. Mm. So I ended up taking to Instagram anyhow, and from Instagram. They they saw it, got petty with me on Instagram, and I was like, y'all are an establishment, and y'all did something wrong. I could see if you were like, you know, sorry, hey, it just ain't going to work out. We would have left alone and just kept it pushing. But they were like really power tripping, like, no, like, oh, she, uh, we'll be lame and she'll still be underage. And they was just doing the most. And I'm like, what kind of establishment does this? So that's why I'm, say, I'm saying all they that to say. They weren't being professional? Hell no. Nah. We'll put a pin in that. Yeah. They weren't being professional at all. Mm. And and it's just for me, it's when I found out who owns the business versus who actually goes and spends money at the business. I was like, this is some typical RAS stuff, you know. Mm. So it just it just made me feel like this ain't where I want to be anyway. Like I really don't want to be here, but you know, I'm still respecting the craft and respecting the grind and respecting the fact that I have to take these steps to get to where I want to be. But when you treat somebody like that, it's like, what am I doing? So I said that to say four major stages with reputable brands that ain't gonna treat me like, you know, whatever. Um, and uh, so the playlist, mm-hmm. the stages, um, making money by increasing visibility because that's really what I want to do. I want to be seen, How be much heard. Money? Out of forty five hundred, if I can at least make ten thousand, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Make ten thousand. Four stages, 20 playlists. Four stages, 20 playlists, and what's that? A hundred and twenty percent return on investment? Yep. Yeah, when I put it like that, it's like, yeah, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> it's not, if your dreams aren't crazy, you're not dreaming big enough. That's what they tell me all the time. Yeah, crazy so, people say shit like hey, that. Hey, I mean, but then they hit it sometimes. Not, right. Sometimes. Well, the lottery. Sometimes. Like, I, I want you to think about this. <laughs> Back to that lottery analogy. You, If you want to hit the lottery, yeah. what do you have to do? Play the lotto. Right. A billion times. How do you play the lotto? Pay money. You buy tickets. Yep. Where do you get this money from? Your work. Right. <laughs> You so work, even if your you dream work hard for the money. and goal is to hit the lottery, you got to work somewhere to get the money for the tickets to play the lottery. Oh, your rich grandpa could give it to you, too. But that's also Maybe a rare you occurrence. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My uncle hit the lottery once. True story. Okay. It was pretty cool. How much? Uh, it was one point something million that oh, he hit man. for. Yeah. And it, but he went and gambled it all away anyway. So it was like. I mean, he played the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> he hit, and I'm not going to put my family business out there, but I am. And we got a little bit of that money, mm. just a little bit. And I, my parents invested it into their business that 
ended up moving us down to Georgia. Okay. Which hallelujah, because I wouldn't be in Georgia, I'd still be in New Jersey in my life. Who knows what my life would have been? What but, the blood clot. Yeah. <laughs> Because a lot of people from where I was from, they ain't make it out. But, yeah, so that worked out. That one lotto hit landed us here. Yeah. yeah. So here's the, and so. So it's with, possible. That's all I'm saying. All right. Yes, it's possible. <laughs> possible. But, you know, and, you know, when we talked about that, it's like, and watching, rewatching it, it's like possibility is a binary. Mm. It either is or it isn't. It is or it ain't. So there's no increase like you, in probability. Like there's nothing that you can do to add to it. There's mm-hmm. nothing that you do to increase. Like it's either possible or it right. isn't. You can make it more probable by buying more tickets. Yeah, and so like so with what you're planning on doing, very much um, possible. Yeah. Now, with the budget. It's probable. Um, everything that you're looking to accomplish is probable, mm. um, but it all depends on how you spend the money. I was gonna say, how do I increase my chances? Right on making that happen. Well, so one of the things is one of those stages is your stage, so that puts yeah two of the performances, one or two of the performances, so three others that you have to go after. Two. Um, and in that putting that together, you actually generate money which goes toward this budget. Mm-hmm. Um, and that goes toward you generating a profit toward your end goal of the turning it into ten thousand dollars. Yeah. So it's see how lining things up and putting things in perspective. So doing your shows right now lends itself toward two of your main goals yeah um the one that it doesn't lend itself toward is playlisting yeah and playlisting that's that's simple that's you hire someone Mm -hmm. you hire companies to pitch you there are people who have relationships and pluggers that like yo try it out reach out to curators if they like the song they put it on there maybe it's on there for a few weeks maybe it's on there for a few months um, there are also a bunch of piss poor companies that say that they do that and really just turn yeah. around and put you on bodied up playlists and have you looking crazy out here. I was going to say, because I did that with um, a DSP that I was using. I'm not going to mention any names. Mm-hmm. And you basically like put in for this lottery to go to whatever playlist that you go to. And so I did that a couple of times and I got placed on some playlists, but I don't see any streaming actually going on from those playlists. So, mm-hmm. so that led me to... I don't really understand how it works until you, you're just now saying like you you hire well, somebody and I'm like what? <laughs> well, I mean that's everything. Like that's that's well, really everything. Everything is you hire somebody. It's like, it's like, I know a guy. <laughs> it, you know, like yeah. I don't plumb. Hire a plumber. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> right, right, right. So that, that's what it is. It's so you like, just gotta find that person. Yeah. That's not and now, lying about what they say they and, do. And though. here's the here's the here's the thing. Um, it's hard doing that with artists. Mm. Like people who provide services to artists, um, it's a lot of people in certain spaces that are bad at what they do. Mm -hmm. Um, Sorry about that. That are bad at what they do. Um, That are bad at what they do. (laughs) (laughs) That are bad at what they do. uh, All right. Because artists are shitty people. Yeah. And shitty people draw shitty people. So (laughs) if your goal is to make a huge profit and make all kinds of money Mm -hmm. and not care about anyone else around you, Mm -hmm. who do you think is going to deal with you? Nobody. Or or somebody shitty too. Yeah. Right? Who only cares about, about making them. money and not doing it. <laughs> right. Correct. So yeah. Yeah. You got seventeen bricks in that bag right oh, there. Oh yeah, I can help you. Yeah. It's just, like it's it's um it and so you get a lot of Horrible. people who provide like there are a lot of people who provide services like that genuinely are trying to be the best at what they do. Mm-hmm. Like 
publicists, promoters, managers, DJs that love breaking records and love finding who I know people across whatever whatever profession that yeah. love this shit and, and love like, yo, I just found this. We just did this and they're excited about shit. And then you have people who just see everything as a lick. Like a perfect example is um, South By. Mm-hmm. So um, we with the South By, it's our, we do our events and it's like always about like we want to make dope events. Like we want the event to be dope. We want great performances. We want people to leave with new connections and haven't had an experience. Mm-hmm. And Would you have a 100% success rate at that? Oh, so yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> making a bag. Yeah. But th- here's the thing. There are other people who, for them, it's like, how many people you, how many people you going to get to pay? The, mm-hmm. They going to do, oh, that means we can get. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's all that they look at. And I've, I've been in those places yeah. with those people. I've been at events where I've been a project manager on even, and they're like, they have a two hour slot time and mm-hmm. they're trying to put twenty people on in two hours. Yeah. Which I've it's never worked. Right. And I've been with that same been with a company specifically through three of those events where they've done the same thing and at the tail end people are upset because they didn't get to perform. Their their show was cut short or you know, all these other problems that come right. up. So it's people just wanna get a dollar. Right. Going for a dollar. And don't care. Don't care about who they piss but, off, don't care but about But here's the reason, because artists are shitty people. Mm. Like I do my event, like a perfect example, and I'm just throw some numbers out, round numbers to keep it simple. They charge $100 to perform over here. I charge $300, period, because mm-hmm. that's what it costs it's to worth. do it right. Yeah. Not even what it, that's what it costs to do it right. Because they're only charging a hundred dollars. More people going flying. They're over trying there. to do twenty people mm-hmm. in a two hour mm-hmm. block to get to the two thousand so they can cover security and do da 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 and everything that's involved. <laughs> I ain't doing that shit. Mm-mm. I'm going to charge three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna charge more. And I, hey, not as many people gonna sign and people gonna well, they only charge a hundred, but then why ain't you go over, over there? there. Go over there. Yeah. Like I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, head over there. We, we clearly don't need you over right, there. Right, right. Good so, luck. <laughs> so, but in that, I can do seven people. Mm-hmm. And it generates the same revenue as their 20. Yep. But now, I only have seven people. And I'm not, still not, yeah, you're not about to perform 10 minutes. Yeah. Nobody wants to hear you. Mm-mm, for 10 minutes. They don't know. And you. they don't know you, right. <laughs> Nobody like, knows you. They don't want to hear you for 10 minutes. No. <laughs> So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this. And then it allows me, boom, we have time. Breathing and, time. Yeah, to let the do DJ play some music. And let people mix and mingle and relax. And then we I, always have, like, labels come through. Different people are like, ah, oh, bring them up on stage. Talk and I bring them a little talk. Like, yeah. it's light. And everybody, that's why I have a 100% mm-hmm. success rate. Because I don't sit up and try to get a million people on stage. And I'm, I'm very fine with charging more. So that I can do what's right, yep. like, and that's the and that's kind of the thing because artists are shitty people. Yeah, all they care about is the price, like, and what they get out of it. And so, because not understanding the logistics of running an event, or not understanding really the music business or relationships and branding and all these different things, the only thing that they understand is. Minutes. Mm. Oh, oh. I, I want get, fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. They got seven. Why? Like, well, I got so these, it's yeah. these the things that they can quantify because it's like those are easy things to quantify: mm-hmm. price, the amount of time. time, price and time. And so, well, sure, I can get a six minute set over here, ten minute set over here for a hundred dollars. I'm like, I might as well some, go over there. Some of y'all ain't performing. Nope. Like, and like. Nope. Nobody wants to see. Nope. I, like I know how many people are going to leave once you get to set song number three. Yeah, <laughs> like, facts. It's like what's what's going on? Like across? we don't know you, <laughs> and I don't want to sit here and hear you that long yeah. with the same song you got playing three different songs, and they all sound the same. Like no. But but that's the thing is, and, now, and even if you're like, and I'm not even going to say they're bad. Mm-hmm. Great artists. Oh, like you listen, great artists. But if I don't know you, a new a new Jay Z song comes on and everybody stops. 
Like, because I can't sing to something I don't know. Yeah. I can't dance, really, to something. I could, like, a little nice little two-step, nice little bob, bob. <laughs> but I can't do all my little hand motions because I don't know what's coming up. I don't right. know what they're about to say. Right. Mm. So, it's, it's, so I'm not listening from an entertainment and enjoyment standpoint. I'm listening from an analytical, do I like this? What is this? And I'm trying to hear what they're saying. And, oh, I like that hook right there. And mm-hmm. it's, it's a different mind frame. Like, you were in the... The review, like you, 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 you popped up in the review. We had the um, our music reviews that we do uh, Sundays and Wednesdays. Um, she, she, she stumbled into the review <laughs> <laughs> on a good Sunday. Um, how how did you enjoy the review? Oh, it was pretty cool. Like okay. the like I said, the one thing about that review is y'all were brutally honest. Y'all definitely, but I mean, you weren't mean. You were just like very honest because some people get in the review and like, yeah, I like that. And do, 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 do. even I, there was some tracks in there. I was just like, I don't like that at all. Like. Mm-hmm. Some things I, I didn't even want to comment on, but there were other people, Jeremiah, the mixed guru, who was definitely brutally honest, you know, yeah. saying what he thought. And then you gave the two cents about what you thought. But people respect it, though, because you're honest and you're not sugarcoating. You're not coddling because there's only so much that you could take. It yeah. doesn't help you grow at all. So I like the review. Okay. It, it was pretty dope to me. Yeah. And then everybody in the comments just going in and talking about what they thought. And it was very active. So it was cool. Yeah. And so that and that's the whole thing. Like we with with us doing the review, um, when we we do we do it in a way that allows us to do that. Mm-hmm. Like taking the extra time, putting the system together, doing all these little extra things. Like where you have some people is like a music review, ah, uh, cash grab. Yeah, and it's like mm-hmm. it ain't about. Exposure. It ain't about development. It ain't about. It's just and and there's nothing wrong with that it, for some because there's a lot of artists that they just want to play their stuff. And yeah. They just want to be active. They just want to go to the wine hoop. They just want to get on a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. But hobbyists. Yes. Yeah. And and there's nothing it's wrong cool. with that. And so, but for the people who want to do more, right, make a career out of it for real. Right. It's it. You have to do more for those people, and to do more for those people, like yo, we have to charge more to weed out the hobbyists. Like I used to do free stuff, like we do the free music review. I do it randomly when I was in the car at the office and I had downtime. I go live and let people come in and play their record and give them some feedback. And and I, I used to actually do this. Either you can ask a question for a free consultation, or you could play a song. Hmm. What do you think 90% of the people chose? <laughs> Play a song. Exactly. Yeah. Because 90% of the people are hobbyists. Yeah. I don't, I don't care about this business. And right. I'm like, tell me what you think of this. Right. Like, I just like. Let me know what you think of this music. Maybe well, yeah, he, maybe was, he'll like me because he'll hear my music. I was making it mad yeah. and they played my song. Right. And, my know, song was played like, and I'm making yeah. it mad. Yeah. And that's the hobbyist. Yeah. And so it's like most um, artists haven't crossed that threshold where they're serious yet. Mm. And so if 90% of the market is hobbyists, then most of the people who are providing services, their target audience is hobbyists. So the way that you sell to hobbyists isn't with a business proposition. I can't talk to you about a return on investment. I can't talk to you like, like... you can get way more people to sign up like for a stage to pr- pay to perform during South by. Yo, we're going to have little baby's cousin in the building and da 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 da. And like, get, just dropped out the A&Rs and mm-hmm. da da da. You know, gas, such, it such, up, gas, yeah, it up. gas, yeah. gas, 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 gas. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and so at that point, it's like, oh, yeah. And so they buy into that. Mm. And so. That never works out. And it's like, because that's not real. Mm. But we can sit up and do something um, very different where it's um, like, for instance, we do our Meet the DJs event. Mm. First year we did it. And it's like $500 to perform. $500 to perform. Um, One song. I was like, and I think I may have booked six, seven acts hmm. to perform. Um, 
Wow. Seven or eight. But it covered it covered my cost. I wasn't tripping. I just wanted to make sure I, I covered the cost because I, I partnered and bought in on a venue. So I didn't have the full burden of the venue. Mm-hmm. And I was only doing like a, 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 a set amount of time at the venue. But I planned the rest of the event. And like I just really... I wanted to do something for the DJs because, like, man, everybody always do all these things for the artists. Don't nobody do nothing for the DJs. So um, the whole thing was to put the, uh, a venue together where we would host meet and greets for the DJs. So we did the flyers. Every DJ that we um, were hosting a meet and greet for, we did the flyer. We ran ads. We did yeah. posts on it. We did banners with all their names on it and stuff so people could come in, follow them, meet them, buy them drinks, talk to them. Oh, yeah. And so um, we did 50 club radio mixtape DJs from all over the country. And the Mm. performance, you got to perform in a club. Full of DJs. Full of DJs. Who could take your record everywhere. Yeah. All over the place. And so, but. Wow. In addition to, like, the performance, like, when I bring the artists up, because we do industry events. Mm Mm-hmm. I actually talk to the artists. I interview them. I, like, I go over their music, what they got going on, so I ask them the questions that to prompt them to say the things that they need to be saying in a club full of DJs. So, oh, yeah, you're already getting shows, or this has been on the radio, or this thing. What do you have going on? So it's, for me, everything is about creating a situation or opportunity to build the brand and market them. So... Doing that. And wait, you said you had 50 DJs and six artists? It may have been like eight. But that's still. Six like, or eight. You, you, that's still a handful that yeah. you can actually like really help. That's yeah. amazing. People don't do that. Yeah. People don't do that. But because it wasn't, for me, it wasn't about making a profit off of it. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure I broke even on. This is something I wanted to do for the DJs. And I wanted to provide this opportunity because I was doing this for the DJs. I also saw where I could create an opportunity for these artists mm. and subsidize it. Yeah. So for me, it wasn't like, like, ah, I'm let's making money yeah, off of this. Like, right. And that's the, that's the problem. Mm-hmm. It's always grab some money, grab can, some money. Yeah. yeah. And so in doing this, like, that's why, like, people often imitate the things that we do. But no one ever does what we do. Success. They don't no, have success. No, they have great success. People have great success doing, but they don't do what we do because what mm-hmm. we do is help people. Mm-hmm. Like you can imitate the actions. Like I could flap my wings. Don't <laughs> but mean you're going to fly, right? <laughs> so there's a lot of times people will do things like, oh, they're doing that. Like, oh, we could do this. And like, yo, it's funny thing. Kim was like we, um, going through tickets the email and someone sent replied instead of forward and they were forwarding it to someone and they had sent it on us like yeah we could just do some stuff like this and just grab it. this a money grab and we could get all the money for some subscriptions and da 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 and I was like and wow. I was like and that's why that's why niggas fail <laughs> wow. like, like cause you like never mind that we put like 1.5 million dollars 1.4 million dollars into building these platforms, putting events together, sponsoring people, putting behind actual artists, getting artists on the radio. Like the Meet the DJs event, we've had artists who've gotten FM radio play, hey. who've gotten booked on shows, who've gotten paid features from coming to this event and attending this event and and meeting DJs and meeting people there and performing there. Wow. It's about creating these these opportunities. Mm-hmm. Bridging the gap, really That's it. truthfully. And so, in, wow. in doing that, it's like creating creating this space where where we can be our best. Mm-hmm. It was like, and it's hard to do that when you have the worst people around you. So it's like when everybody's just trying to get theirs. Yeah. And so it's like um, <sighs> preaching to me now. It's a, I'm all right. It's funny because I was really about to. <laughs> It's an old video, and I'm a, it's an old video I posted on YouTube a long time ago. Maybe Place it right 12 here. 12 years ago. <laughs> no, I just like, it's like two tableaus, one of heaven and one of hell. It's mm. a picture of heaven, a picture of hell. And um, in the picture of hell is all of these people seated at a big table, mm. a big, big table. 
all the favorite foods, everything you want is on this table, whatever the most delicious things so, all on so this table. So desirable to be in hell. Everything, yes. Mm. <laughs> and strapped to everybody's hands are these long spoons. The spoons are so long that you can, you can get to the food, but you can't turn them to feed yourself. Oh. So it's like torture because you can, you can get a scoop of that peach cobbler or whatever mm. your favorite foods you that your mom used to make or whatever. And you can't feed yourself. It just means you got to feed the next person. That's the picture of hell, heaven. Oh. In heaven, it's all the same situation. Same thing. But instead of trying to feed themselves, so you have to feed somebody else. They reach across and feed the person. And that's how you, yeah. And yeah. everybody eats and everybody's happy because my thing is to help you that's and dope. you're helping me. And so that is mm. the, the independent music scene. Everybody's worried about trying to feed themselves mm. and never feeding anybody else. And so you have all the talent and you see all the opportunities and all the things and you, for some reason, but you can't access it. But you know an artist who would probably be a better fit on this beat for this producer that you actually have a relationship with. But because you like that beat, you ain't going to put this other artist in contact with them who would spend some money and who might pop this record off. You're trying to keep this producer for, for yourself. yourself. Yep. I, I literally, artists be like, yeah, man, I'm telling you, like, from out of town, it's like, yo, like, I come to your site because you got, man, all the events I found out, like, yo, it's like my little secret, my little secret thing, like, I don't let nobody know about because that's how I find out about all of them. Like, so you find something good and you keep, keep it to, it to yourself. yourself. Like, that is the, I don't... Worst mentality to have, man. That is just the mentality. Crabs in the barrel. <laughs> no, and, monkeys, it, and I monkeys. can't even, no, I can't even say crabs in the barrel because, like, that ain't, that's just, like, <sighs> shitty people. Shitty people. It shitty is. Shitty people. It's it just is. a it's a scarcity mindset. Yeah. It's a, like... It's always the this thing of comparison, and so if I, if you have something, I, I'm not gonna have enough. So just keep it all to myself, which yeah. there's a plenty un, to go around for everybody. But yeah. yeah, I get it. And so like, and and so that's kind of the thing where we talk about all these different things, right? Mm -hmm. So from a standpoint of how we do the meet the DJs event, yeah. it's better for us. For me and my business model with the way I deal with artists is I'm going to charge you what I feel I need to charge you to give you what I feel you need mm. to actually be successful. I'm not going to charge you what I feel like I can get away with charging you to make the most money or the least amount so I can do numbers and just create like... like A facade. A facade. Yeah. And so like... And here's the thing. What I do is far less profitable. Just being straight up. Like, I could be significantly more profitable. Mm -hmm. um, and there are companies who take the model and do things, and they're way more profitable. And I was like, and they ain't helped nobody. Like, literally have not, like, like what they do isn't helpful. Like, because it's, it's a machine. Mm -hmm. Like to grind up, it's like selling selling shovels during the gold rush. Like and it's like you're not really trying to. Now, here's the thing: if someone really wanted help finding gold, though, go and find a geologist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> geologist costs more than a shovel. Yeah. But they're going to go Get and take you, soil right? samples. Mm -hmm. They're going to do, yeah, the chances of it being a deposit mm -hmm. in this area, what you might want to do is like all of these things. Right. And so. Um, Saves you energy, but yeah. you're going to spend a little bit more. Yeah. So that's it. And so, but that's that's the whole thing is, is as as artists and why I'm, I'm so adamant about education um, is this, like, there are always going to be predators. Mm. That's it. There are always going to be predators. So I don't care about scammers. Huh, so, like, they're out there. They're going to. In and, abundance. And there'll be more of them. Yeah. <laughs> like, especially all you young people who don't want to work a job. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> hey, I work, okay? <laughs> no, it's just like every every damn TikTok and reel I see is, is how to how make to finesse income. You want to finesse? Be, <laughs> how Let me to show get you money this finesse. Without doing anything. Right. Like absolutely nothing. That was you want to live the life of a <laughs> Right. Literally, that was a that was a reel we just saw that said how to fin- finesse the IRS yeah. out for your taxes to get the most amount out of your taxes. And I, I was watching the CPA the other day. They said that if you got uh, $500 this year for taxes and somebody's telling you that they can get you 13 um 13,000 the next year for taxes mm. they're doing some some type of scamming and you're going to go to jail right. and i mean but here's the thing and here's the, and, and, and and in between that, that good though. you you might have been able to get 3,000 for your taxes cuz you just don't know how to do taxes right <laughs> right but you won't go to an accountant nope you're gonna go to the person who's gonna get you thirteen thousand. The nail tech who's <laughs> doing who's doing uh, taxes and, this year. And that goes back to what I talked about mm-hmm. the scams. Yeah, I have to be getting over to spend money. Yeah, as a as an artist, that's the mindset. If I gotta be able, to, I gotta be finessing, getting mm-hmm. over. It gotta be some outweighted return on investment mm-hmm. in order for me to spend money, and so that's how a lot of professionals and companies and service that. That target independent artists solicit their services on the specter of becoming a star and popping off and like just some shit that's possible, yeah, but not very probable, and and that's because that's what motivates people to spend. And so when you spend like that, and then it doesn't happen, you get disillusioned, and now everything's a scam, and you can't trust anybody. Can't trust anything, and it's it's hard. Yeah. So, right now you have forty five hundred dollars and twelve months ahead of you. Yeah. Now, with that being said, your goals are twenty playlists, four major stages, and a profit of at least ten thousand. Okay. And so we've already kind of outlined how you can do. You can hit the profit on the ten thousand by doing the two shows. Yeah. And those two shows will create two stages. Good stages. So you have two more stages that you have to do and 20 playlists. To get to. Yeah. And with getting the the playlist, um, that's pretty simple. It's a matter of. Who you know. Yeah. Is it simple then? Well, it's like I got a. Um, I actually, I just got off the phone. I was having a um, meeting with someone earlier that actually does that. Mm. Um, one of the one of our members, um, we got them like over a million streams. Like, like, and this is like they did the campaign a while ago, and it's hit a million streams because it's the, the song has still been going. Like, Wait, you said one of your members, you got them a million streams? Not, not me. Oh, somebody Their else. Company, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Like, and so that's what, like I'm for like, and that's I'm not trying to be Walmart. We do one thing very special. Mm-hmm. We find our 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 company. And for me, my my vision is. Filtering out good people yeah. and putting them in good situations, mm. helping them build their brand. And so with that, we mm. partner with other companies. We find other companies like like even what we do during South By because there's so many people that go out there and just get fleeced or end up in those situations where they don't get to perform. And like you like I perfect example, the DJ Meet the DJs event. Yeah. There was two other promoters that that was in on the club. They called me last, like, because they needed an extra for the club. I was like, all right, I'll come in. And so I did my uh six, eight acts and I was done. They was like, but they had a late start and everything. But I already I'm not pressed. So yeah. I'm not tripping. Like, do my stuff, I'm yeah. done. Yeah. And um it was an issue with one of the promoters, like so, because he like, it was ridiculous. Yeah. He he wanted he wanted us to pay him <clears throat> out of the money that came in from the performances. I'm like, why would we pay you out of the money to pay for the performances and pay for the venue and pay for the like pay like spent maybe fifteen hundred two thousand dollars just on flyers for all the DJs and banners and posts yeah because I actually promote when yeah. we do stuff like I ain't I'm not we not about to just be Go here out there. yeah <laughs> <laughs> like I'm running ads I'm yeah. doing I'm making sure this is a good event buying mm-hmm. rounds for the DJs and mm-hmm. stuff and so um but what ended up happening is um 
the other promoter was like selling slots, like 10 minute slots. Like, yeah. And to artists, and there's like artists that flew out from California and like with a whole bunch of people with them. And like, like, yo, shit was about to turn very violent. Yeah, for these, like, real quick. And like, but I'm like, shit, all my people right. are going <laughs> Get out of the way. <laughs> but what like, ended up happening was mm-mm. one of my members booked to perform through one of their promoters, one of the other guys. And I was like, and I was like, so I, I took over the show. Why would you do that? Yeah, I don't know. Like, he's <laughs> like, so, and, and I don't, I have no idea. Cause I'm like, well, I know why. Cause I charge 500. Like, uh, so if you see, like, those. Yeah. Well, he's doing 300 and yeah. you doing and so, five. So. Yeah, and, 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 and this is the clusterfuck you get into. Yep. <laughs> so, but because he's a member, I end up sticking around and I took over the show, hosted the show to make sure that everybody got to perform. I pulled all the artists together. I'm like, yo, I know what they told you. Listen, but. y'all can all lose a little or y'all can all lose a lot. <laughs> so just figured it out, like shade everybody one song and put it together like in, as far as and just you know smoothed everything out for everybody. None of these people booked through me. None of these people had nothing to do. But it's just like because I got a member that's there mm-hmm. and he's in a like, let me And you had a hand in it You promoted You did a lot of things No my shit was done <laughs> So wait When y'all like, got done is, You got rid of all the promo stuff And everything that you no, did No 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 like, like, like I did the My thing was Meet the DJs Yeah Like they had They own Whatever they was doing mm-hmm. Like I don't Between whatever And whatever hours Yeah, 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 yeah Like yeah, yeah. I'm like But I was running Meet the DJs All that Because I just wanted The DJs to be able to come And that was Enjoy my thing. Co- and yeah. that's done. So that was I, successful. My <laughs> goal was accomplished. <laughs> like, <laughs> he said, I'm good. <laughs> like, like, they find you tomorrow on right. the highway. Like, that's Eesh. on you. Um, but you just stepped in and helped still. Yeah, just because it's like, like, I'm like, artists are shitty people. But I love them. Yeah. Like, so I was like, all right. Babies. Yeah, babies. You still gonna love them anyway. <sighs> Look at We're you. We're <sighs> <laughs> Until y'all turn about seven. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah that'd gotta be the age. Get, gotta like, get your shit together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go over there. Like. <laughs> but um but yeah, like so so end up putting everything together and um got everything smoothed out and, and all the artists got to perform. So that worked it's, out. It still worked out. That's good. Yeah. But it, it it's like but it all comes back to when when there are situations of just helping people. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's like the average artist won't appreciate that. Yeah. They don't give a shit. That's what you're supposed to do. Nope. Like, I'm supposed to spend the rest of my day here hosting an event that I make no money from and not promoting my event that's the next day. It's like, and that's the that's the thing. It's like, it's like, it's like yeah. you do when you do for people, you do th- you do unnecessary things for people, and it's not appreciated. Yeah, I mean, I I find that a lot of those people are those folks that grew up in survival mode mm. that feel like they need to get it how they can and get the next dollar anyway by any means necessary. Like, because I had a conversation with a friend a couple months ago, and that was his big issue as to why he did things the way that he did things when he threw shows. Because when I throw shows, ten people max. Because I know my time frame, I, and I have to get you on stage so you can do your thing and get off successfully. So I only do ten people max. But he was doing twenty people in the same amount of time, and I'm like, how are you making it happen? And for him, it's like, well, I gotta eat, I gotta pay my bills, I gotta da 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 da. And I'm like, but that doesn't help the person that's getting up there. But he grew up in survival mode, you know, mm-hmm. always having to fend for himself, always having to figure it out. So. People are shitty people, you no, know? No, no, no. Everybody has. He just used fucking life as an excuse to be a shitty person. Guess what? Nobody pays my mortgage. Right. <laughs> right. You gotta pay right. everybody it's has like, to pay their see, bills. See, that's the thing. Right. It's like it's like when motherfuckers say, Well, you know, yeah, I would pay you, but it's the first of the month. Yeah. Like, nigga, I got the same and calendar. And it's happening. Like, right. I got a commercial lease. I tell you, the, and amount of, the amount of issues that I saw in that relationship right there from seeing how you did things versus how I did things, because like my bills may not go paid, but I'm making sure I'm paying everybody that's in my circle because yeah. I want them to be good. 
But for that person, it was quite the opposite. It's like, I got to pay my bills. I got to da 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 And then yeah. y'all come after, you know? Yeah. It was just like, ah. But, and, and that's the, but that's the that's thing. That's the hell versus heaven. Spoon. I will, I, and that's like, I will take a loss on something. Mm-hmm. Like, because this is my, I chose, I chose to play this game. Yeah. I chose this. Like, that's the thing. Like, so I can't, like, another post. You can't find a DJ in the city of Atlanta that I didn't pay. <laughs> like, when we do an event, mm-hmm. whatever I said I was going to pay you, you got I it. paid you. Right. Whatever it is, like, whatever is like, yo, I'm going to tell your friend, like, I got you. Yeah. Well, I can't, I can't do that. Can we do this? All right, boom. At the end of the night, ain't never no balled up, rolled up money. Like, it don't matter if it was 12 people in there. You get Everybody got taken care of. Yep. Like, you can't find a person that's done business with us that didn't get what they, that, that's what it is. Now, I can't have some complaints about not getting what I, what I was supposed to have delivered. Oh. But, <laughs> but it was like, all right, bro. Like, yeah, we just ain't going to use you no more. Yeah. <laughs> not we ain't going to use you no more. Oh, man. Nah, so, but that. but that's the but that's kind of the the important thing is like when when navigating this, and I I, I don't want to say like kind of put a pin in what this actually is. This conversation is finding service providers, mm-hmm. finding people that you can work with, uh, finding people that are actually that that have a passion for what it is that they're doing. Like they may not have necessarily have a, a passion for just playlisting, like mm-hmm. like but. For marketing, for breaking artists, for like they they moving around, they building relationships, they doing things like they're 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 they actually have a passion for music, and so they're doing something that's related to something that they love. Mm. You follow me? And it's like a lot of times we see people who worked in corporate or did different things, and now they're doing an open mic. Or showcase and like, how does that feel? It was like, because it was a thing that was making money at the time, but <laughs> like, oh, we got to do this, we're gonna do a music festival now. Like, it was like, you don't even like music, like, right? And so, it's just all the like finding people who who actually care about what it is that they do to a degree that they want to be good at it, yeah. But filtering those people out too, because I think that's a huge issue for mm-hmm. artists is finding because you can find somebody that says they do it, how well do they do it, right. Are they actually doing it to the extent? Because on Instagram, they can pay for pet. They can pay for. You can pay for views. You can pay for likes. You can pay for followers. You can pay for everything. And then they show you my. I show you my Instagram, and I say, "See, I can do this. I'm telling you, I can do this. Give me your money, and I'm gonna do it for you too." But then at the end of the day, all they're doing is paying for views, paying for likes, paying for extra followers. Right. So it's and and I'm saying that to say, like, how do you find the real genuine people that are good at what they do, and are gonna actually do what they tell you that they're gonna do for you. Um, it's 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 hard because you don't if you don't have that relationship. It's hard because of y'all. What? Like, I'm gonna tell you this. I miss out on so much money when I was younger. I feel like he's projecting right now. No, no. I'm what? gonna tell you. I missed out on a lot of money when I was younger because I cared. Oh. Because I would sit up and talk and I would give like like yo we can do this and this you and cared. I would I would explain how we can do this thing. I was mm-hmm. like oh you got this record okay we could do this and we do that and if we do it like this and all right here's how we could do that no that's too much money we spend this amount of money so I'm just kind of working through it just spitballing it. like because like we gonna we'll do some business I'm like let's I'm already I'm on go like because I love doing this this is nothing to me. Like marketing, putting the plan together, that's nothing. <laughs> like, and but here's the thing. Uh, must be nice. <laughs> because shitty people mm. is like, oh yeah, that's how you do it. Well, I don't need you now. I know how to do it. Like, I know what to do. No, you you know what I was talking right. about doing, not you how to do it. You don't know how to do it. And then try to go and do the stuff and then it, it falls apart. It doesn't make the money it don't all work. <laughs> and and that's because it, it's a very sad thing. I think it's like a psychological thing. Most artists and creatives have low self esteem when it comes to this space because you're not successful, and it's like <clears throat> because we you determine success based off of an uh, um, the goals a that you measure need. that yeah. that doesn't even relate to yeah. you, your budget, or anything. <clears throat> so in that. It's like I joked about uh, the Groucho Marx comment, I think it was. It was like, I wouldn't want to be um, in any club that would have me as a member. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, 
if I spend too much time talking to you, mm. you devalue me because mm-hmm. you know you ain't shit. And if I got time to talk to somebody who ain't shit, then then I, I must not have I, that much right. popping. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So if I don't, if I sit up and I'm distant, and like, boy, they would the invoice get paid like that. If I take too much time talking, talking to you to on the phone, if I meet, then it's like, ah, well, we just. Uh, it don't make no sense though. It and and here's the thing. I'm not. I don't like playing games. I'm not like if you can't if you can't see the value. If I gotta play psychological games and do all this shit with you, I don't want to work with you. Yeah. Like. And and that's where, I, like I said, I passed up and lost a lot of money mm. in my youth, like doing consulting and doing stuff like that, because I I just enjoyed the work, mm. like and I was eager, like I just like I I have I because I used to be an artist, so man, all this shit, all this shit you see people doing, I've been doing this shit for fifteen years, all these challenges and all this shit. Like I've been, we've been doing the beat game. We started the beat game in 2007 where we put out beats and gave away $5,000. You just rap over the beat. Whoever has the best song wins the mm-hmm. beat. We would do uh, feature challenges with artists and you get paid verse. and yeah. yeah, all this stuff. This is shit, shit that I dreamed up when I was 16 years old on the bus back. stop rapping. Thinking yeah. like, man, if they had an extra song with just a beat at the end of the CD and artists could rap and put mm-hmm. it up, like all these things. And then the technology caught up in like 2005, 2007. And I just started implementing this shit and just trying shit because I genuinely love doing this it. shit. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was like when... Like, when you talk to someone who does marketing, when you talk to a DJ, I know the DJs who love this shit. And I know the DJs who this is a hustle for them. Mm. This is like, yo, this better than sound dope. But then you got DJs who's just like, yo, that love this shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and will go 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 all in on a record, on an artist that they believe in. like, And it's like, and here's where artists are shitty people. The person who will go all in on your record, the DJ who plays your record because they fuck with it and tell everybody about it, you never pay that motherfucker. You go to the motherfucking radio station or the DJ at the hottest the, club yeah. with your little tax refund check money and go break break bread with a motherfucker who don't never. give two shits about you. And they never going to spend it again once you leave that door because, yeah. I've seen, I they going to do whatever they say. Okay, I'm going to do this. And they might not even do what they said they was going to do. But Not you got someone who's been supporting you mm-hmm. for like for free. For the free ski. And don't even think about like, yo, this this, this motherfucker give you beats every every month. You getting beats from this guy. <laughs> and he charged for these beats. How the beat stars you in, but like, yo, like, break him off. Right. Like, just like, even like, bro, like here 200. Like, I know this ain't for the like, just I appreciate you, whatever. Like, let, like, let people know that they're. They're appreciated. And it's like, that'll make them go harder. Mm -hmm. But it's like, and that's where it's hard to find the people like that that are that that really are serious and passionate about what they do. Mm -hmm. Like the publicists and the the bloggers and the um, the DJs and all these different people. Because when you find one. Rather than appreciating them, you take advantage of them. Yeah. Because artists are shitty people. Because artists are shitty people. It is true. And so if if you can learn to like just identify like when someone do some shit that they didn't have to do. Appreciate that shit. Like, oh damn, that wasn't shitty at all. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that. That was anti shitty. What is <laughs> that was litty. <laughs> <laughs> right, anti shitty. It's Liddy. Wow, I'm at these that. <laughs> so yeah, just being able to appreciate. So when you find like reaching out to different people, like and it's like you'll see the people who are doing content for the sake of drumming up business, mm. and people who are doing content for the sake of educating and shifting the culture and putting new ideas out there. And like you can you can tell the difference between yeah. the two. Somebody who actually loves it versus just doing it for a hustle. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell. All right. So now we about to switch. This is totally this is gonna be the B roll, the post credit scene. <laughs> talk about let's talk about South by Southwest and your ridiculous Woo! ass. 
<laughs> right? So she comes in to the office. Oh, man. She comes into the office. And uh, we're getting everything together. We got the Making the Mad compound during South by Southwest. Um, for those of you who don't know, Primrose is a is um, an aspiring, um, like very talented, um, amazingly gifted fitness instructor. Oh my god! <laughs> Ain't that what the dream is? Wow, Ain't that wow, what the goal wow. is? <laughs> so at any rate, absolutely not, y'all. <laughs> She also sings too. When she oh has my free God! Time. Now she also <laughs> sings. So um, you're gonna understand why he said that. In so the second uh, my wife asked what she was doing to see if she wanted to come down to Austin for South by Southwest with us. And uh, no, it's outside of her budget because we saw in the last episode she's broke. Broke. Right. And <laughs> Austin is incredibly expensive, expensive around South by Southwest. <laughs> It was like, oh, we got you. We'll take care of you coming out. Right. but she, And she asked me about it, about it, and I told her that when I found out about South by Southwest a couple years ago, I said that I wouldn't go until I could afford to go and perform on one of the stages. And so then Kim says... I don't know. I wasn't listening. Oh, okay. Well... <laughs> I think I just well, like, <laughs> well, had his wall to, <laughs> ear to the wall, just listening. It. No, so then she says, "Oh well, you know, we have an opportunity where you can come work for us during mm-hmm. South by South by uh, between the seventeenth and nineteenth." And immediately my ears went up, and I'm like, "Oh snap!" Because I would love to go, even for an opportunity just to work to be in an atmosphere. Mm. But on the eighteenth, I'd already committed about. A month ago to this fitness class um, where I've been going to these fitness classes every Wednesday and on the 18th is this women's um, special fitness day oh. and they're doing some awards and the week after that I'm throwing my listening party there oh. so you know I was trying to keep my commitment that was the first thing that come into my head because I'm an artist that is not a shitty person and I like to keep my word as best as I can so I was like uh struggle internally oh. do you go do you not go but then they're like like, are you an artist or a fitness instructor? What are we doing here? Right. So. You being shitty to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't win. <laughs> like, no. So here's the, here's the like, it's, it's very simple. Yeah. Like, it's not an internal struggle. You made a commitment to somebody else. Yeah. That's it. I did. Like, so it's like, hey, something just came up. Like, I've been wanting to go to South by Southwest for years. For years. And the opportunity came up for me to get to go out there, but it's on that day. Is there any way that we could shift that class the week before? Because it's like over a month out. Yeah. <laughs> the, or, he's or, probably not going to shift it for no, a no, but it's but, okay. But, <laughs> but no, 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 he's probably not. Yeah. But then he could say, well, no, I can't do that. But like if you need to go out there, like I totally understand, or – he could be a shitty person and be like, who gives a fuck about your dreams? Right. <laughs> like, and he ain't going to do that. At that point, he makes his decision. Right. But, at that point, we're no longer friends because why would you care about my dream? But I know he ain't going to do that. I but, just have to make the decision that's going to work out best for me, which is being a selfish artist and saying, I'm going to go do what but, I need to do. But no, no, no. See, that's the, like, don't don't swing the pendulum too far. Don't overcrack. <laughs> no, like, because you still, it's like, you don't want to be passive. Yeah. You don't want to be aggressive. Right. You want to be assertive. Correct. You don't want people to get over on you. No. You don't want to be out here getting over on other people. Mm-mm. You want to be able to work together. Yes. So if, like, right now, like, this is an oppor- opportunity to come up. Yeah. Address it immediately. Mm-hmm. Like, just like, hey, call. You should call right now, live. You live with the Artists of Shitty People podcast. We're oh, going to call right snap. now. You're going to be on speakerphone. <laughs> You're going to tell the person. <laughs> then this is funny because he's he's pretty um, he's pretty colorful himself. So this conversation might actually be really a great one. Let me see. All so right. what are you going to say? So, hey, Fred. <laughs> That's your work for us. That is, that's how I slide it to hey. So, funny thing, right? I know that the big workout se- session is going on March 18th. Mm-hmm. However, I just had this amazing opportunity come up to go to South by Southwest. You've heard of it. You know, the big uh, artist 
festival. It's a festival, right? Yeah, and Art, music conference. Music How you and ask music. That? No, right. Like I've been artists and shit. People. I've been uh, wanting to go for years. Right. It's a it's festival, a festival, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> conference because I was like festival conference festival it's the both. same it's yeah actually both okay so South by Southwest festival and conference and I just got this amazing opportunity to go but it's March 17th through the 19th and that means I'm gonna miss the 18th class and you know how I love your classes I don't miss none I don't miss none so then what so and that's not at all what I told you to say oh. right see? <laughs> see because you've already said that you're going to miss. The class. the class You've already called With hey. an ultimatum yeah. Like with disappointing oh, So that's aggressive with, No that's, that's you Like I'm doing me uh, And so your so Is like What you gonna uh, do right. <laughs> So no so No so So, so it, it's like So hey This opportunity came up um, But it's the same week As the, the class And I have a commitment to you Is there any way That we can move that to the week before Because this is a Or the week after Like even if we have to move My listening party Like because this is something That I've been wanting to do For a long time And it's an opportunity for me Hmm So okay. now you've given them options, options And you're here to compromise It's not Hey I just don't want to miss your class You haven't said that You're not going to do the class Now it's on him to say I'm the shitty person I'm like Nah fuck all that The 18th <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> only because I I know mm-hmm. he got people specifically coming out for the 18th, flying in for that. So I'm like, he ain't gonna change the class. But I'm gonna ask. I'll see. We're gonna but see what happens. But you teaching the class? No, I'm not teaching the class. Well, you're just doing the class. I'm What's d- going on with the class? What are you doing? So it's a women's a women's uh, celebra- celebratory class, right? right? And I've gone to all of his classes, and so I'm one of those front line people. The mm-hmm. people that stand in the front and everybody else that ain't never really been here and don't come like that, they watch you. But the fitness instructors... Oh, that's... Right. You're so like I'm one of the... the you're line. extra? You about to miss South by Southwest to be an extra? <laughs> I'm not a. I'm not, <laughs> no, you know, like Apple Fitness. Hey, if you want to do yeah, a little no. harder, <laughs> maybe over here. <laughs> That's what you're about to miss. I am Jamie. <laughs> I am Jamie, but I have a name. I have a name. Oh my God. You hear this? When, y'all are going to watch this later and be like, Primrose, it wasn't even that hard of you to do this. <laughs> And I'll like, be like, but for me it is. You got to understand, like how I was raised to be a people pleaser. You know, sometimes right. it's just really so hard to, to be, be like, passive. I'm letting you down. To yeah, be yeah. To end up going out and paying for all these people's food. Yes. Over and over and over. Yes. Again. So you're yes. not at all aggressive. No. You're passive. Too passive. And people are getting a pass. And so you're missing mm. out. On your goals and your dreams and these things, because you're more concerned with how they would others. feel about yeah, yeah, me. And here, and it's like if you just kind of like, hey, South by Southwest just came up, like this is, and this is the thing, it's like saying, all right, so now having to understand this, like I am not going to be able to make it. I just got the opportunity, like to South by Southwest. They're taking care of my travel and everything. Listen, I understand that, you know, this is like, I, I'm letting you know as soon as I found out so that if you can get a replacement, I really wish I could make it, but I know you can't move the day. You got people flying in. And I even understand, like, I was supposed to be doing the listening party there the next week. If I can't do that, I understand. Just let me know because I had committed to this and I know you committed to that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's about the framing of things. Framing things. Yeah. How you frame it. Haven't been that great at that, but <laughs> let's see how it goes. Yeah. Ready for this? Dun, 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 dun. Here we go, ho. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> Watch me. I don't want it to all go out. Hey, Fred. Hey. <laughs> What's going on, man? All right. So quick thing, right? Um, I just got this opportunity to uh, go to South by Southwest. You know what South by Southwest is, right? The uh-huh. music conference. Yeah. I just got this amazing, dope opportunity to go to South by Southwest. Uh, everything's okay. paid for and all that good stuff. The only thing that I was like kind of hanger about is that it is March 17th through the 19th. And you know, March 18th. Get your money. 
<sighs> Fred. <laughs> You gotta go get your money. I mean, I, I look, I appreciate you know you and Elijah be doing everything for me. Yeah. But you got a chance to go do a concert or do some stuff like that. You better go get your money. Um, I mean, one person, we know you'll be with us in spirit. Yeah. I, I'm not gonna be mad at you or nothing like that, little sister. Oh, I appreciate that, Fred. And it was over here eating me up <laughs> because I really wanted to be there. You know she's saying, Eliza girl, but she got a chance to go to this big conference about big musicians and stuff. She's talking about eating her up because it's the weekend of my show. I like you to better take your ass home. <laughs> You're Regina. Ah, oh, man. Well, I appreciate you, friend. I just had to let you know, man. I just found out about it. I was like, I got a call, friend. We're going to still be in shape, still cut up on Wednesday. Yes. Well, go get your money. Don't do that now, man. I'd rather for you to do that. We got, think about it, we got the fitness weekend. We got a lot coming up. So, no, go do that, from bro. All right. Well, there it is. I'll be there. Then. Uh, oh, tomorrow, uh, remind me to show you how to work this new system because when y'all be practicing at night and we're not there because uh-huh. that uh, land because the, the alarm when I was on Regina she was in the bed last night Ooh. so that way y'all be able to uh, click it you know what I'm saying okay so I need to show you how, how it goes okay no sweat I'll be there alright thanks for yeah, it yeah. go get your money you know I got you yeah, I appreciate you All right. All right. and that's what y'all do y'all make obstacles and problems out of nothing out of absolutely nothing, because I ain't even had to say too much. You, you thinking as an artist, because you're a shitty uh, person. What like, no, no, you thinking, you're thinking someone else's. Because if it, if because if the roles are like, oh, I can't, I can't do your listening session this week, but I've printed flyers. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all be like two steps in, and be like, oh, wow. <laughs> Y'all, that was easy. So easy. That was way too easy. And but and just think about the, the wow. him and Han and it eating you up in the time and yeah. trying to figure it out and all of this stuff. And you would have done that for a week or two weeks and all that stuff. Or just finally decided now and not because you didn't want to commitment. A, a, address it. Wow. And have an uncomfortable, possibly Con- uncomfortable Cause, conversation. Because that wasn't even uncomfortable. No. Like I thought it was. And he was like, oh, go. Girl, go. And I'm like, I sat here and worried and said all that with back there with Kim. Isn't a shitty person. He's not. He's most not. people, like most mature adults, aren't. Yeah. And like he said, I always show up. I don't never not show up. I be there. Like, yeah. whatever you And need, when you I got do you. that, <laughs> people notice that. Yeah. And when you don't, they people notice, notice that it too. too. Right. People notice that too. Yeah. And so that's the that goes into everything that I've yeah. been talking like everything where I talk about when you're finding good service providers when you have people who are genuinely supporting you as artists mm. you have people who are genuinely supporting you and you don't acknowledge it that's what makes you a shitty person like for him, you every time you're out there you're helping you're doing stuff and it's like and then the one time when it's like hey I'm not going ah right that's what a shitty person does yeah. Make a big deal about it. Yeah. Damn. Like the the person that you didn't put on all your shows for free and did all this stuff, and now it's this month. It's like, hey, this is what's going on. Like, I, I don't have any room for free people, but here's what I can do is I can do half off for you for this one. Right. And it's like, ah oh, man, like <laughs> shitty person. What? Yeah. <laughs> shitty person. And and, mm. and that's what it. That all of this comes down to is is. I would say that last thing that you're looking for with um, the playlisting, you could, you know, you, you learn the playlist yourself. Just build relationships. There's a there's a company called Playlist Supply for twenty dollars a month. Mm-hmm. You can have a list of playlists. You can um, search. They have integrated with Spotify's API where you can search for playlists. So you can put in keywords and different things. And it'll pull up playlists, some with emails or Instagrams. You can reach out to the people, organically build relationships and do that. That's a hat. Hmm. Playlist. Supply. Supply. Yeah. You know we talk after this. Yeah. You can ask uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Putting over the Right. Like- <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so. Like, right, let me get that. <laughs> um, but then, like, that also entails you wearing another hat. Yeah. On top of all the other hats that you're wearing. Um, and then there's the time of actually doing it, building up the relationships, and maybe it's successful, maybe it's not. The trial and error of learning a new skill or 
finding someone who actually does it. Yeah. And doing, um, like, because we, like, all right, so we did, one of the companies that we, like, we had a conversation with earlier was to put something together for our members um, where they do, like, a $1,000 campaign, and for our members, they get $200 off. So, and that's, like, pitching on the playlists and running YouTube ads is, like, a single release push campaign that we're um, putting something together with them for. and like, But their minimum budget that they start at is with, like, $500. Um, but all organic playlists and stuff like that, but they've been doing it for years. And yeah. like I said, done artists, and I've seen artists that they've done it for and how it works. Um, but at the same time, it's like having conversations like, when I talk to people and they're excited about the little new stuff that they're learning and things that they're trying out, it's like they're still adventurous in what it is they're doing. It's not just like, oh, I learned how to do this thing or I got this contact and this is how I make some extra bread. Mm. It's like the desire to be great at something and to to always um, ele- continue Get better elevated. at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's what like I always recommend when you're looking for people to work with. Those are the qualities and characteristics to look for with their relationship to their craft. Mm -hmm. And then just like Fred, not being a shitty person when it comes to relating to other people. People. So Mm -hmm. will they take the time to answer your questions? Will they take the time to like just like the simple like, hey, um, uh, I've never done this before. Like, do you have a couple references or some like ask some reasonable questions like, in general, I tell people when you ask questions when you're doing with service providers, like, they should have a website. Mm, yeah. They should have somewhere where you can go <laughs> get a gist of what it is they, they do. Not just Instagram. Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> and that's why so many people get scammed. I've fallen for that before. I ain't yeah. going to lie. I ain't going <laughs> to act like I ain't been the one to just, they send me their Look Instagram at you, and be like, showing Instagram. up at your whole self. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's been me, y'all. I've gotten scammed. <laughs> So, yeah, so it's like having a website and and seeing that and yeah. getting all that. But then, um, so now you have an understanding. And so where you don't, where you have questions or knowledge gaps, like, I see that this package, but why would I get this package if this one is only this much? Or mm-hmm. You have questions over what you read, so now you can ask intelligent questions. Mm-hmm. Like, so with your monthly campaign, I know you do this, but... If I started with this campaign and it was going well and I wanted to upgrade, would I just pay the difference? Or is it now they know, oh, this is someone who's serious, someone who's – and they now they can really talk to you. And, and and you can have a better level of conversation then. All right, so how can y'all help me get my – like, <laughs> it was like, why, yeah. why do we have this <laughs> Why do we right. have this website? <laughs> like, why do so we you didn't read any of the yeah. <laughs> like yeah. And so that's that and that little stuff like that. So those are just my recommendations when it's when it comes to finding those people. Yeah. So and I'm gonna use that because that website tidbit is definitely one of the top top things I look for now because I've gotten scammed off of just looking at the Instagram and being like, oh, well, the Instagram says this, and you have reviews from people that said you did such a great job on your Instagram, which could have been very well them from a fake profile, which mm. it probably was, you know? And so, yeah, definitely that website is a marker, and then the quality of that website, too, because some of them websites... Man, you seen that, the the fake accounts, the fake making it matter Oh, pages. yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like... I t- and see, like, I report it, and it's still up. Like, they don't do anything about that. They don't do anything. They don't take like, it I down. Th- they don't... That's why, like, I've really, like, we stopped advertising with Facebook. Like, we just stopped advertising, like, because they've been totally, like, this has been, like, these, there have been pages, fake pages popping up for the past three years. Like, boom. Like, every quarter, like, they'll have, do a campaign, they'll just scrape our content and, and like people file for it. Yeah. And that's like, at first it made me mad. And it was like, then I got to the point where, well, they deserve it. Yeah, you ain't reading. <laughs> at this point, you ain't like, reading. You put it like, it's like the link is like, <laughs> it's a bit.ly link or a yeah. tiny URL yeah. link. That takes you to a Google Sites page mm-hmm. with my like, I'm like and oh then the, the the website itself, the little 
mobile site is horrible, terribly yeah, put together. It's, I was it's like, a, it's this a Google can't site. be. It's like where you just put, <laughs> and it's like, and I'm like, yo, they're like fishing for people's credit card information. Yeah. Cause like I'm, I'm assuming like whatever they tell you, hey, you won, just sign up over here. The credit card, you won't be charged. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, they ain't charging you because they probably just gonna Taking take your information. Your information. Mm-hmm. And it's like, they'll uh, charge you somewhere else. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. But so, nobody who fucks with us falls for that, right? <laughs> so, right. Facts. It's like, it's like I can't save them all. Can't. It ain't my job. You can't. Hey. <laughs> so, but yeah, this has been. This has Another been great. episode yeah. of Artists and Shitty People. Yeah. Um, I gotta give you some homework for next week. Yeah. So you now have um Okay, wait, I had one uh one more thing I have to say because it was we're on tough conversations. Okay. And um so South by Southwest, I know that y'all are doing sound stages and stuff, and uh I wanted to ask, is there any room for uh Miss Primrose to get on the sound stage? You can't afford our sound stage. <sighs> you see? <laughs> so, I tried hey, though. Hey, you can't get on the sound stage <laughs> because you just got a subscription. Oh. Like now had you had a subscription earlier. A year ago? Like months ago. Like oh. Sasha Renee, Sasha Renee got her subscription and November. November. Mm -hmm. And is on the stage. Okay. Well, I I asked because it was hard for me. It wasn't hard for me to say no. You need to ask. It wasn't hard for me. Even if he says no, I was like, but I don't feel like I can ask that right now. You can. And I can say no easily. Like, the answer is going to be the answer. (laughs) So I just take it. (laughs) But I did it, though. I did it. Look at you. I did it. So that's all. (laughs) I can say I did it. But but here's 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 the thing. And I, I, I. Really important thing, and I, I want every artist to understand this about South by Southwest. You need to go to go, not to perform. Just to go. To go. It's like there are less shitty artists in Austin during South by Southwest. Because you got to pay. Exactly. Less hobbyists. Hobbyists are less likely to spend money on a flight. In a hotel, mm-hmm. even and if they the don't, conference. Forget the conference because uh, everybody because the conference is expensive and everybody can't afford all of that. So they just go to Austin. Yeah, because it's like there are. I feel like we just need to do a special episode just for. All right, we about to end and we're about to record a special <laughs> episode, right? <laughs> just for South by Southwest. <laughs> and. You're back. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> On a very special artist of shitty people. Yeah. Primrose has questions about South by Southwest. Oh, for continuity? You want to like, <laughs> right, I'm like. <laughs> it's like, you move shit while we're on. <laughs> try All, right. All right. And we're back. <laughs> All right. On a very special episode of Artists, artists of Shitty, shitty people. people, Primrose has questions about South by Southwest. Yeah, so I've never been to South by Southwest, but I always said that when I go, I wanted to perform on the stage at South by Southwest. So the hard question that I had to ask Kelby and making the mag was, can I get on one of your stages for South by Southwest? The answer was no, which is cool because it was just hard enough for me to ask. So I did that, but I've never actually been to South by Southwest. And so I want to know, like, what is the experience like? I didn't I didn't know people to just fly out there just to be in the atmosphere. I thought you when you flew out there, you're going to the conference. But this is the the beautiful thing. This is why artists are shitty people, because if I'm not performing I, I don't, don't want to go. Right? No, not even. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like, I don't care about it. I don't want to be there. I don't want to meet people. I don't want to see. I just want to. They can't if, see if me. I, yeah. If there isn't going to be five minutes where it's all about not me. me. <laughs> <laughs> fuck your conference. <laughs> like, so that this was is definitely the thing. me. <laughs> every artist. And this is why That's, you're stuck. Yeah. yeah. This is why. You don't make it to this level. You get stuck at this level because the most important thing about South by Southwest, even like, right, the music conference and festival Mm -hmm. is great, but it's also expensive. Um, The the badges range from between like $700 to $1,500, um, and that's just for the badge, for you to have access to the conferences and all that stuff and all that stuff. Right? Um, everybody can't afford that. Yeah. Uh, but because 
everybody can't afford that. There's a whole other side, uh, unofficial South by Southwest. There's the official conference and festival and all the events related to the company that is South by Southwest. But then there are like literally hundreds of venues within like this area. It's like, imagine um, it's like a huge bar crawl. Like Austin is a huge like live music venue type uh, city, mm. live music city. And it's like, so um, imagine for like 15, 20 blocks, the streets are um, blocked off and people are just walking in the streets on this main street that's right one block over from the convention center. And on either side, there are bars and music halls and clubs and venues and Sounds like fun. Everywhere. Yeah. And yeah. so people are just, it's like a huge bar crawl going from event to event. And, it's and that's not even here. with so the badges. Like, that's not even like, there are some of the events are official events. So you have to have a badge to get, to get in, in. Okay, but not all of them. And that's, and that's the thing because uh, all of this stuff is going on for South by Southwest and hundreds of thousands of people are coming from all over the country. And so in your head, you hear music festival and everybody thinks rolling loud and like, no, Coachella. <laughs> it's not a field. Yeah. And there are not two or three stages. Mm. It's literally dozens of venues and events going on at the same time. And when I say like, like 50, 60 events may be going on at the same time. Wow. And different clubs and different venues and showings and listening parties. and Definitely all didn't think it was that. Yeah. And so that's the problem. Everyone... Nobody knows what, what it, it is, is. Yeah. but have an idea of how they're supposed to use it and how it's supposed to benefit them and how they're supposed to go down there. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know what it is. I had no idea. I've seen a few videos, but I thought yeah. it was like, that's the main stage, you know? Right. Like, <laughs> not, there are other stages. There, and it's like, and there's no main stage. There uh, is no main stage. That's the entire thing. There is no main stage. Wow. There are there like there have been people who get like because even with official South by Southwest, um, you can submit to get booked as an act, um, and I think they charge like fifty dollars to submit your music. I saw that yeah. yes, because um, I think I got that back in September, or October. Mm -hmm. It was earlier on, and um, I didn't submit. Yeah. But <laughs> it's like I ain't going unless I'm right. Pulled, but I ain't submit but I ain't my submit music though. Yeah, my friend sent it to me. She's like, "Oh, you should submit." For the Look at your da, 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 da. friend not being she, a shitty person. She, she wasn't. She, she's a she, litty person. She's always sharing because she's in the music space as well. Right. She's like one of the main people that's always giving me ideas. Do this. Do this. Do this. So shout out to Daniela she Javina. She's an artist. She, okay. but she's not a shitty artist at all. Like, she's not. I can tell. She's not. Like she's a really good friend. What's her name again? Daniela Davina. Daniela Davina, this one's for you. Yeah, right. <laughs> she's a great friend. Yo. So yeah, she she sent me the link for South by Southwest to submit to get on one of the stages. Didn't know it wasn't the main stage, but it's one of no, the no. stages for South by Southwest. Well, so here's the thing: the way that they do it, you submit um, through the South by Southwest website for fifty bucks, and that was their it. team reviews it, and then like they start announcing artists, mm. and so they book hundreds of artists. And they put them on a variety of stages. So they have a bunch of different events. Like I said, it's not like so they this person might perform at this activation, this person might perform at this showcase that they do in the convention center, this person mm. might perform on like and they partner with different companies and like they may do something with um Digiwax, they may do something with different promoters that partner and do actual <laughs> official events with them, mm -hmm. and they will supply artists for them to showcase on the events. Mm. So it's like, oh, oh, that's the way that you get on official showcases. And then you go up on the official South by website and all the benefits. And they'll even give you a $250 stipend for travel or what? badges. So $250. Take the badges. <laughs> what? Right. Badges. Badges. Yeah, right. You so, take the badges. So that's the, the benefit, right? Okay. And so, um, but for the people who miss out on the opportunity, like every every year around this time, everybody hit me. Hey. <laughs> Can I get hey, on the stage? What's going on with South by Southwest? <laughs> I was like, yo, bro, we 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 wrapped wow. that shit up weeks ago. Wow. <laughs> so um, but like so like so every year we do our Media Matter Sound Stage where we put 15 artists. Um, on stage for free at our, our event. And um, we like, so there's this whole unofficial side. 
because there are all these people there, and all most of them don't have badges. Mm. Let's just be very simple. Most of them, you got Austin as a college town. You got all these college kids there. You got people driving from Clean, from Houston, San Antonio. They ain't about to spend seven twelve no dollars, right? So you got all these people there because it's and it's a festival vibe. It's like. It's Vibes. like spring break. Yeah, type. that sounds like so much fun. Yeah, it is. Wow. You'll be working. Right. Um, so, <laughs> so all of this is going on, and you see it. And now it's like, but they can't get into the official stuff, so the venues are doing unofficial stuff. Yeah. And so promoters come in. I was like, oh, sense. well, we'll do, we'll do a Media Matters event for all the people. Reason why I started Media Matters because I would always get approved for media because I have a print magazine. And it was like, I knew so many bloggers and other people. I was like, damn, you got a dope-ass blog and you you can't get media passes? Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to do an event. Like, I'm always helping people. Yeah. Like, the whole purpose was I'm going to do this event for media and then I um, brought the media in for them to do interviews. But then I let that first year, all of the different people who were media, I let them bring an artist to showcase. So just an artist that you was feeling like, oh, this is I'm with such and such. We do this, da da da. This is an artist I discovered that's and present fire. them and let that's them rock. Wow. So, um, but that's that's how I got into doing events during South by Southwest. Is um, saw so like, yo, there are these people who are there that aren't that don't have badges that don't have these things. All right, how can I create a dope experience and do something with that? Mm. And so. There are venues that do stuff like that, coming to do stuff like that. And then there are people who just like, cash grab. Like, <laughs> so it's like, but it's the fact that there's that there's that void for people who are there without the actual badge. Yeah. So you have official events, which are done by South by Southwest, the company. You have unofficial, unofficial events, events, which are done by independent yep. promoters. Mm-hmm. And so, okay. unofficial doesn't mean that it isn't legit. No, because I definitely yeah. see a lot of unofficial. Like, Fader Fort wasn't official. Like, World Star mm-hmm. event was unofficial. Like, it's like a lot of bigger yeah. brands do unofficial have, events. Yeah. Like, they're not partnered directly with South by Southwest to do their event. Um, but then, there are, like, I've been to official events that are like, yo, the, the, the promoter I was talking about earlier that, that had the. Terrible. They messed up their venue. Uh-huh, they had uh-huh. a nighttime event, official event, empty, cricket. Like because he don't know how to promote. Like he's not a promoter. And that was an official South by event. Partner with them because he relationships. Uh, and they, they brought certain people and it's like nobody. Like and I know the person who hosted it. And it was like they had to you know just ask security like can can you let some people in just so we can have these people perform in front of somebody. <laughs> So and so it's like it's still it's you it's really about who the promoter is in the event mm. like still um, so good promoters good events good concepts good promotion like that's what matters the most um, good people yeah and so it's like when I look at an event like if it just it, it seems like yo y'all ain't even promoting this. Like I feel like okay, you just expect this to make money, yeah, you and you're not willing to invest up. into it. It's the same thing, like we talk about with the yeah. music. Like I just want to make money and not invest. Like I just want to do this and not invest, but people gonna show up and give me money. And it's like it don't work. It's like not gonna that. happen. Yeah. So that's that's how South by Southwest is. You have the official and you have the unofficial. The unofficial doesn't mean that it's gonna be. Um, Any less of an experience. It does. If you just show up and go. Yeah. And so here's the thing for for my artists why I say you just need to go. Yeah. Is because you're going to have far less impact with your performance than you will have with your communication. Like, you can jump around on stage and all the energy in the world, but if you don't know how to talk to people, that don't mean shit. Yeah. And so you go out there and you walk around and there's people on 6th Street, there's all these venues, like you meet Mm. people who work at BET, you meet people who work at, like... Revolt. Revolt and and all these different things, and you just talk to them. Like, that's where I met, like, I met, like, so many... Huge bloggers. I met so many people who work at major companies, the 
Um, the I can't remember his name anymore. Like I, I ain't talked to him in like some years now. But <laughs> like uh, he's over the um, the BET Awards. Oh wow! Like just randomly on some shit, and we was just talking and like. I met a lot of good people, like like, and just made some relationships and stuff like that. And when you I ain't out. had to jump on no stage. Yeah, I and mean, so it's so it's like wow. as an as an artist, hmm. it's the stage thing is ego. Like I just want to feel like get an artist and just look at me. They gotta see me. <laughs> yeah, but huh. you can go out there and just talk to people. Yeah, and it's like and and and. Show an interest in other people and have conversations and exchange numbers and follow people and and it's like to be put in a room with people who are driven enough to book a flight and hotel mm. and all of these things and be out there and be out there and the ones who are receptive because you got still shitty artists that are out there yeah most of them are from Texas. <laughs> No, no, really. They don't have to. They don't have to go. Do all they, that it's extra, just like yeah. I'm driving down here. It's spring break still, mm -hmm, so like mm -hmm. we do our events. True. We do our industry events during the day, and then after the the nighttime events, I ain't doing no industry events. Like so, meet the DJs. Media matters. Daytime, nighttime. I do parties. So we're doing twerk fest, thousand dollar twerk competition. Hey. We're still gonna put some performances on it, but yo, the DJs are spinning records, and we want people to drink and have a good time. Don't nobody want to talk about your rollout, motherfucking one in the morning. <laughs> Facts. It's like, yeah. like bro. have a good time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. so you can have a good time with these people that you met. Yeah. So now you done met this DJ early. Now you see him get to dance like that. Y'all just all laughing, taking pictures. And that's fun. how a real connection is sparked. Exactly. And made. And so it's like creating an opportunity mm -hmm. for organic experiences to actually create a real bond. It's like people say, yo, you can network on the internet. And it's like, yeah, you can. But you can't. <laughs> like, but you do a lot of stuff on the internet. But like, it's not the same as face-to-face -face and meeting somebody. And yeah, it's not the same. It's not. And so like, and so that, that to that extent, um, that's why I say artists should go. Um, and and experience the atmosphere and move around like you go down there with some flyers with some merch with some little stuff to give away like and that's just reason why I even say having that is it's an icebreaker it, it gives you a reason to actually have to talk to people yeah. to walk up to people yeah. and interact start a with conversation people. Yeah. put something in their hand and be like hey you should have this yeah. oh what's your name yeah. and then yeah so and it's like yeah. The communication um, is the is more key than the performance. Um, yep. And if you can perform, that's great because yep. now you get to showcase what, what you it, can do. Yeah. And then, but then show them who you are. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the, that's yeah. the, the the key thing. Um, with us, we do mm. the media matter sound stage. We do that every year. Um, we put fifteen at least fifteen artists on stage for free, but. That's something that we do just for members and subscribers. You have to be sub, um, submit to the, uh, submit through the site. Like every few weeks, we pick somebody from the submissions. First artist was like eleven people submitted, and he got picked out of eleven people. So wait, they submit, and you only pick from that pool that has submitted that week. No, we pick every like every once you submit, you're in there, and oh, so every okay, week. Okay. I see what you're we pull, and so maybe eleven people this week, but and then ten more people sitting in the house. Twenty-one up. week, yeah, yeah. Just keep going up. So it's just how how it works. Like people wait to the last minute, and <laughs> and now you're going up against a hundred yeah. <laughs> at the last minute. So, so and so, that. but it's like um, it was a total. I want to say it was like a hundred and fifty-eight or a hundred and forty something. And you had to uh, narrow down to fifteen. Yeah. Wow. So we got a good team. Like, wow. But it's like, but think about that. 10% of the people who submitted. Wow, music. 10% of the people who submitted mm -hmm. got put on the stage. There were some amazing 10%. odds. Them is actually amazing odds. What do you think about that? 10%? 10%. But you, I mean, like, that's a lot of submissions for yes. only 15 people. To get put on stage, no. I mean that means you you checking Yo, all the boxes. You, you got gonna, to check all. Oh, the I'm gonna play the playlist for you. Yeah, I want to hear it because we put I'm all like, the artists. Ooh. We put them on the playlist. Oh. Uh, yeah, we got we have a playlist. 
Like, so every week we add, like, when we so artists get picked, they get added to the playlist. So they all get to hear each other. We got a group chat. They get to meet each other, know each other beforehand, wow. learn each other's music. It's a it's an experience. Like, uh, we do so much extra shit. That's a community. Shit. Yeah. We do a lot of extra shit that no one sees and no one, because it's about the end result. Yeah. Helping people. And yeah. actually connecting, because yeah. that's, wow. Like, from last year, from last year's event, we, um, is an artist by the name of De La Mons. I'm letting him perform for free. Um, he wasn't selected for the 15, but and, and I'm just I'm like, he performed last year <laughs> along with um, was an artist by the name of De La Mons is from Cleveland. Um, Jay Reese is from LA, and Chris Lenard is from Detroit. And so like they all come down there, they meet everybody, meets each other, build these connections. They end up cutting the record together. And um, he submitted it, played it on the review show like a month or so ago. Record's amazing. And I was like, yo, if y'all in Austin, y'all debuting it on the stage. Hey. And they perform it for free this year. That was- so it's just creating opportunities. That's, that's it. That's dope. Yeah. Hmm. Life's simple. Hmm. So, but yo, that's the whole thing with South by Southwest. Um, I will say... I will like like I said there are shitty people there. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> I will say this the the people who are there are a lot more people like on a typical day you go out to an industry event, ten percent of the people are serious, ninety percent are hobbyists. You go to South by Southwest, twenty five percent are serious, thirty maybe. Like at at night during the daytime, like sixty percent. Okay. Sixty percent. So like during media matters, meet the DJs. Some most days. of that people, them people is serious. Yeah. But as the night rolls in, partiers, college kids, yeah. everybody's them um, people off work. Now it's mm-hmm. like it's turn up, mm-hmm. and it's like it's gonna be packed. It's gonna be crowded. People just looking to have a good time, and so it, it, the ratio. Yeah. It's hard to find them at night. So you want to get out there early for the daytime events. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, shoot, I'm looking forward to South by Southwest now. All right. Not even to hit the stage, just to go <laughs> <laughs> and work. Yeah. <laughs> so um, hopefully that, that gave you a better idea of what South by Southwest is. Hopefully it gave y'all a better yes. idea of what South by Southwest yeah. is because it's so many. Um, so much more than just getting yeah. on the stage and letting people see you. Yeah. Wow. And even we, we do some stages where people can pay to get on the stage, but even that Limited number of slides. Yeah. Music has to meet a criteria. It has to fit the vibe of what we're doing for the event. And it's like, we read, like I said, we'd rather charge this and make sure that everybody performs and has a good experience than do that other stuff where they try to cram 100, 100 people, people on, on the, one stage yeah. in two hours. Yeah. yeah. So that's the move. Cool. So well, South by Southwest, y'all. We're going to do an extra, extra, extra. Extra, extra. After this. <laughs> After South by Southwest. Okay. So you can talk about my, my your experience. experience. Yes. <laughs> All right. Cool. So that wraps up um extended episode um plus uh, B roll. Uh, this is gonna have to go behind the Patreon facts, wall. <laughs> facts. Yeah. Yeah. Artists and shitty people podcast. Yes, artists and shitty people. Yeah. Yeah, but we're working on us. it. Right, we're, we're working on it. No, no, quit saying some of us because you're a shitty person too. So just say, but you, if you want to say anything, say, but we're working on it. But we're working on it. Right. <laughs> Show up as your whole honest self. Yeah, I be shitty sometimes. It's okay. All right. All right. We out. <laughs>